Welcome back, Double Team Team. How are we doing today? I feel like, okay, so we're finally gonna have a kink episode. I feel like it's been a while. I don't think it's been that long. I mean, we there's always elements of kink and some things that we discuss. But I don't know, we haven't really had a kinky episode in a while. Yeah, you're right, you're right. Well, guys, um, as I, well, did I tell, did I tell IG? I can't remember if I did. Uh, I know but I told Patreon we and definitely our close told, friends. Yeah, we definitely told Patreon that Nikki and I um, performed at a sex party together. That was, it. Was, this time was an interesting experience. You all know about the time that I performed for a sex party earlier this year by myself. It was probably one of the best nights of my life. I absolutely loved it. And it was such a fun experience. So, of course, I reached back out to hopefully get the chance to do it again. And thankfully, <clears throat> thankfully, we got to do it together again. So, yeah. Or we got to get do it together this time. So, Kimi got to do it again. I got to do it for the first time. Oh, yeah. Basically, I think they reached back out to her. And then I remember a while back, they were they had mentioned, like, if they ever need twins you know, for like the aesthetic of it. And so Kimi was like, oh, you know, if you want, my twin and I can do it together, whatever. Um, so that's what we were. We were ambient twin subs. I didn't know what to expect going in. I mean, I, Kimi told me a little bit about what she had done before and it sounded really fun, obviously. Um, I loved hearing her talk about her story, you know, when she told us last time and it really sounded like she was like in her element um, so I was really excited to do this. And it was, like, a lot of fun. I mean, yeah. it, was, it still works. So it has, like, it's, like, pros and cons for sure. But it was it was definitely a really fun night. It, so, okay, the way it started out, the, the first part of it wasn't necessarily my favorite. And I'll get to it and I'll explain why. So for the beginning of the night, of course, we go in. We go get our makeup done. That was super, that was super fun. Eat a little bit of sushi. Bond with all the other performers. And so they had us wear these hats. It was like these big black top hats with fringe that went all the way down to the floor. One of the hats was like fully, the fringe was fully untangled. Uh, they had brought them in from New York. And then the other hat, we had to like basically cut some of the fringe and stuff because... We spent like an hour trying to make the fringe look presentable for the evening. Yes. It, it was like just a, a giant like... Tangled mess. mess. Yeah. And I was so upset because usually like after I get ready, I take that time to take pictures. And this time instead, we were working on untangling that hat. The entire time. Yeah. So I was But sad. I was like committed to wearing this hat because it looked so dope. Yes. The hat now, was so pretty. The hat was gorgeous. So they ended up putting us in, um, at first we tried out some red short cropped wigs with bangs. Which was a look. I really liked moment. it. Yeah. But it didn't go well with the hat. It didn't go with the hat. And it didn't go with the rest of the outfit, I thought. So what did we end up wearing? We ended up wearing thongs with... Um, it was like a choker collar that had like fringe going down the front. Okay, yeah. Similar. kind of went between the boobs. Similar to the collar that I had worn the first time that I performed, except instead of it being white, it was black. And then um, we had masks and then the hat. So you could only, and we had really dark eye makeup. So you could see our eyes and then like just lots of like, it was very dark and moody. It was, it was red, like a it, red lipstick too. Which yeah. Kind of added a touch of color to it, but it was all black and gold. Um, I thought it was like kind of like a, a sexy Zorro moment. Almost. Yeah. yeah. But it was supposed to be like, you know, a little bit like a Halloween. The close you could get to Halloween spooky season without it being like not a costume. Yeah. Anyways. So might I add the owner of the club had this like she had this sheer black um, onesie thing and over it she had this like gold chain outfit. That was it was beautiful. A She's gorgeous. Her body is banging. Um, and she had his outfit on and I was like, I will, I will be in any cult that she leads. Like, <laughs> hands down, no questions asked. It could be a cult of monogamy and I'd be like, if she's leading, I'll do it. 
I'm kidding. Um, but she, uh, it was. I still dream of that outfit. I've searched and searched Etsy and the internet for a similar one. I have not found it. She said it was a London designer, but I can't remember what the name she said. I don't know. She, I don't even know if she said it. Uh, but it was. It was. It was, was it Couture? I don't know. Regardless, the outfit of my dreams. But however, I did find. Um, it did send me down a rabbit hole. I was looking for like really fun, kinky BDSM. Uh, harness kind of full outfits and I did found this one find this one website that uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to just to say the name but they have some really dope harnesses that I loved and I want to buy one but they're like $500 wait for a full set which I mean honestly it's not that bad um Anosis I don't know if you guys know that brand A-N-O-E-S-E-S Anosis and they have some beautiful like harness sets that are gorgeous there's one that I'm eyeing it's like 500 total I may splurge our birthday is this week actually our birthday is tomorrow um so happy early birthday to us um but <laughs> it, it's the 14th but anyways so yeah that the whole like seeing all the costumes and everything in the back of the room kind of sent me down a rabbit hole of like I need all this kink wear and lingerie. And lingerie. So anyways, back to the story. So we put on our costumes. We have the team meeting for the night. And then our first assignment is to basically be like ambient go-go dancers on top of a table. It was like a dinner table. It was a dinner table, but it was two Made tables wood. put together. And then there was a big crack. And we down were... Down the center. Down the center. Like and, long ways, horizontal ways, not not the short way, like the long way. Yeah, because it was two tables put together. Yeah. And so, we're in heels. We're Yeah, we're in heels. So that was like, that was really the only like terrifying part is that like, oh I'm, man, being in these tall hats with fringe to the ground where like... You e can constantly, like you constantly step on the fringe. Yes. The fringe goes everywhere. Like I remember a couple of times, like I leaned down just to kind of like dance a little bit like uh, lower and then... When I'd get up, like the fringe would be like stuck on the plant behind me, stuck in my ass crack, stuck on, you know, my shoe. Like the fringe got stuck everywhere. Yeah. But the aesthetic of it was dope. Yeah, the aesthetic of it was really dope. Honestly, the hats looked like bird cages. Like when you put it on and the fringe fell down like over you, you kind of like felt like you were in like your own little cage. Yeah. I mean, I, I loved it. At the same time, it's just like, oh, man, it was, it was a little scary. It was it was hard. It because was hard. I didn't want to fall. I didn't want to put my heel in one of those cracks because then I would have absolutely ate it in front of everyone. <laughs> Be over an hour like in heels, just like casually dancing on top of this table. And like it, I, I'm fine at that. Is it my strong suit? I don't know. And on top of that, like, you know, the, the fringe moves around so much that like you kind of want to do just like small, like flowy sensual movements with it otherwise it's it's kind of like too much with the hat if that makes sense my mask kept falling down it was just ugh. i don't know the, anyway, yeah I, I love the hats i love the look everyone was like complimenting how amazing we looked in the hats and like you know we both look the same i remember one of the girls she's like it's almost creepy because it's like you know these like these black hats and it's like these all black outfits and it's just like the two of us kind of like you know moving very slowly in these um in these outfits but anyways Everyone loved the look of it. Yes. But to be in these outfits executing was tiring. You know what? But I'm, I rose, we rose to the occasion and I'm glad that like I pushed through and did not fall. Yeah. Um, I so, didn't fall either. I, I, however, like getting up and down from the table was also tough. Yeah. Um, so yeah, then, fine. so after that, we, um, we retired the hats for a little bit and then we went on to like the circular, um, a different stuff little mini stage it was like a circular ottoman but like with a hard ground so you could stand on it hard top yeah yeah um and we took off the hats and then we stayed in the fringe outfits and then we were just like using these red silk fans and just... i felt like a betta fish yeah because the <laughs> the tail of the fan looks like a betta fish i was i felt like a little kid i was having so much fun with it that sometimes i had to remember that like i needed to be like sexy and like flowy and beautiful not like a little kid playing with this fan that makes me feel like a betta fish yeah but it was fun so i would say that was and that was pretty i would that say pretty, pretty easy yeah. yeah nikki was like standing up with the fan and then with my fan i was like um, kind of laying down on the ottoman that way like my fan was at a lower level so that was fun 
The fans needed a surprising amount of momentum. Yeah. For movement. So then we had like, to have like our arms like. Yeah, I was going to say my shoulders, I feel like got a little bit of a workout. It's definitely more like um, demanding on the body, like all of this than you would think. Even just like standing on a table, like casually, like moving and flowing with the music. And then, you know, just being on top of an ottoman, like holding a fan, like it's. It's very taxing on the body. Yeah. So, like, much respect to, like, go-go dancers and, you know, people that have, like, done these kind of performances. Like, it's it's a lot of work on the Performing body. in heels is hard. Perform- yeah, it is. <laughs> it really is. I used to take dance classes in heels when I first moved to L.A., um, and which was fun because, like, it really taught me a lot, and it teaches you a lot about, like, body awareness. Your calves get a hell of a workout. Um, but it just, it gave me so much respect. I remember I used to do those classes for fun. Like I had a, I had a really great time with it. It Made me feel really sexy and like connect with my body and make me feel more confident, even though I was like not good, (laughs) but, um, you never know. Yeah. And I did it for fun. I didn't do it because like, I was like, you know, trying to be a professional or anything. I did it because I was like, you know, I just moved to LA and I'm like, I, you know, I used to dance when we did cheerleading and I thought it was fun and I just wanted to do the heels classes and I saw it on Instagram and I'm like, I'm going to, I'm going to go for it. And then, um, I just remember when I was in those classes and I saw the girls that were like actually professionals in there and, you know, doing it to train and everything. I had a lot of respect for them and like what they could do with their bodies. So for sure. Makes me want to learn how to be a better performer in heels. I will say the first time that I performed um, for the sex party, I was go-go dancing for the first hour, but it was on next to a pool against a wall. And that was much, much, much easier. A, because I could use the wall to like as a prop. B, Um, you're not afraid of falling down off a goddamn table. Yeah. Um, (laughs) B is probably the biggest point anyways. (laughs) Um, But anyways, and then after... After the Beta Fish fans, what did we do? Oh, right. So we went backstage. We changed into a pair of like these deep red kind of like fuchsia cuffs. No, they were red. They were like um, straight red. That had like a little They were red chain. with gold chains. Yeah. So it was so cuffs you could link them together. Leash. Um, I put a picture. Collar with the leash. Yeah, collar with the leash. And then the cuffs. I put a picture of it on um, our Patreon I don't believe I posted it on Instagram, close friends, but it's a Honey Burdette set. It's kind of like a vinyl leather. Actually, I don't know. PVC. PVC. That's what it is. No, so it's not leather. Um, It's PVC. And I, I have always used primarily leather cuffs for restraints. Um, This was the first time I've used like that PVC material from Honey Burdette. And I really liked them. I did too. I love the color. I love the quality. I they loved... felt very smooth and like nice on the skin. So I think if you're looking to buy, um, and I mean, they're pretty, their honey burdette is expensive. Let me see if, if I can find the price. If you or a known friend or family member works for honey burdette or knows someone in their marketing team, please direct them to this episode. I would love <laughs> to be sponsored by honey burdette. I absolutely adore their lingerie and their pieces. And now I want a pair of cuffs. Okay, hold on. Bondage lingerie. I'm trying to see how much it is. Okay, let me let me just put in collar. Ah, yeah. Ooh, they have it in a really pretty blue color. $170. $170 just for the leash and the collar. Oh, wait. No, I think it includes the cuffs, too. Yep, it comes with the cuffs. Hold okay, on, so for the full set, it's 170 yeah, That's blue not bad. leather and decadent gold hardware. This Lux Bondage kit will bring fantasies to your life. Includes cuffs, matching collar, fastening clip, and then a long draping chain. Okay, so 170 bucks. That's actually not that bad. It's not terrible. It's not terrible. Um, I've spent a lot more on cuffs and harnesses. Granted, actually, now I take that back. Because the one that I bought was the harness and the cuffs. And the harness was much more... Um, what do you call it? Intricate. But I, I actually don't think 170 is that bad. However, I only saw the blue color. Damn, do they not have the red on there anymore? Because I like the red. What is this peach bondage kit? Ooh, look at this peach one. 
Oh, that's gorgeous. And but that this is, we're not doing a paid ad. Anyways. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, Honey yeah. Burdette isn't sponsoring us. However, I like their products. I don't pro- mind promoting like a brand whose products like I legitimately like. That's true. And so using the 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 red leash or the red collar handcuffs and leash. I did love the way really the material enjoyed. felt against my skin. It was very nice. And I thought the way that it like, I don't know, because you know, sometimes like leather cuffs feel kind of stiff. When you, when you put them on your wrist, especially if they're new, granted, mm. I have a pair that I've kind of broken in. So like, they don't feel as stiff anymore, but like my white leather cuffs, they feel a little stiff when you put them on. Um, so because this material was nice, it kind of felt like it, like, it like really like wrapped around the skin, like smoothly and molded over it. So guys, the holidays are coming up. If your boo wants a nice little collar and leash set. Even though we're not sponsored by Honey Burdett, I highly recommend it because I think it's a beautiful gift. It's like nice quality. And Honey Burdett always like comes in really nice packaging. I was going to say last year, Nikki and I bought each other gifts from Honey Burdett for her birthday and Christmas. Mm-hmm. So big yep. Honey Burdett fans. Yep. Anyway, um, so we changed into those outfits and then we had a dominatrix that was, she was really cool yeah her name was she went by daddy and lee um she was gorgeous she had this like black curly uh kind of medium length hair um really kind of tan and then she had these like thigh high leather boots that were like super tall kind of like pleasers and then a like a little tiny black leather outfit that was adorable it was kind of like an off the shoulder top and then like little kind of shorts almost mm-hmm. yeah so we met her um, and we changed into those outfits. And then we went to one of the bedrooms. And so, of course, the main act was going to be, or is, yeah, was going to be Nikki and I getting caned. Now, I have never been caned before. So when we, um, and one thing that was really nice was, you know, like a week or so before the performance the creative director put us in an email thread with the dominatrix and was like hey guys okay let's discuss like experience with caning you know what 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 you're open to yeah what you're open to what you liked in the past as far as impact sessions where your experience level is pain tolerance etc etc um so daddy and lee already knew um going in that you know Nikki and I, Nikki and I like to be flogged whenever, you know, for like a warm up. Nikki has had experience with a cane. I had not. And then we discussed pain tolerance. So we went into one of the rooms and we- Wait, I want to explain a little bit more about caning experience. So I have been caned by my doms before. And so when Candy asked me, you know, what caning was like, um, I told her it's kind of like a thuddy sting. Um... It's, I will admit, the cane is not one of my favorites um, in the past when my doms have used it, or at least in the past when, we did, when I did caning with my doms, it was the first time that I'd ever tried it before, so it was kind of very exploratory, but I remember, like, I had a positive experience with it. It leaves, in my opinion, some of my most favorite marks, and it marks very easily, um, but it's, it's one of the most, like, challenging impact tools for me if that makes sense. Like, if I, like, if I'm being flogged, usually that's more for, like, pleasure. I get a lot of pleasure out of being flogged. If I'm being um, hit with, like, a paddle, that tends to be a little bit more of a challenge for me. I can gain pleasure from it, um, but I, I don't know. I think it's not quite the same as flogging for sure. Paddling, I think, would definitely be one that, like, for me would be, like, a punishment, if that makes sense. Being like, paddled. I wouldn't, yeah, being paddled. Like, I wouldn't look as flogging, I, I wouldn't look at flogging as a punishment. Oh, no, no. Yeah, I'd be like, I would, <laughs> I would look at flogging as a treat. Yeah, I was gonna say, <laughs> so, like, if I've been a good girl, flog me. If I've, you know, if I haven't been a good girl, paddle me. But the cane, in my opinion, at least, kind of elicits the the most, like, bodily response for me, if that makes sense. Mm. So it feels like the most physical release. I can get there with flogging, too, but I would definitely say that caning, at least, like, it, it, it causes, like, the most, like, reaction out of my body and causes, like, the most, like, challenge for my body. So it can be, like, a really, it can be kind of a release, very impactful, very... 
mental kind of impact session with um, with a cane. So now it's been a while since my doms have caned me. I think it was like it's been like months, uh, a really long time. So it had been months since I had been flogged. Yeah. So I was I I wouldn't say I was looking forward to it. But I was definitely very intrigued to have the experience because it had been so long. And I kind of wanted to remember, like, what it was like again to get caned. So, mm. yeah. Um, so we, it's funny, we were supposed to go do, like, the warm-up. Because I, I told her, I'm like, I'm down for caning. I just need a good warm-up. So we were supposed to go do the warm-up in um, the master bedroom. But I remember Daddy and Lee went to go check out the master bedroom. And she was like, um, there's an orgy happening in there. So maybe we should go to another room that has more like space where we can do the warm up and then proceed from there. Which the room that we went to um, had, it was like latex sheets. Yeah, it was like a latex sheet. But they were really comfy. And they were really nice. Yeah, really soft and comfy. I almost wanted to like. Yeah, we should have asked where they got that latex sheet. So I've used waterproof blankets before or like I my doms have used waterproof waterproof blankets like during our scenes before and I like those but this latex sheet was like elevated if that makes sense like it felt like a very elevated I loved kind of it. experience. I really liked it. Whatever it, it felt- was, I was like in my cuz we so we went on the bed, we got on our hands and knees and then she started flogging us. Um and then, you know, some people trickled in, started watching. Um, one of the other performers came in and got, like, between Nicole and I. And then all the three of us were getting flogged. This one couple walks in. They go to the chair to sit down. And then, like, the girl starts blowing the guy while he's watching us getting flogged. So that was fun. But the that sheets was, yeah, felt great on the fingers. And the now, sheet was really cool. And I remember there was another girl that came to my other side at one point and she was getting flogged. So there were like at one point four of us on the bed all getting flogged. And by. what I loved is um, Daddy and Lee flogged my back. I've never had that before. Usually I have like my bum and like my thighs flogged. And then as far as like back. I thought you've had your back flogged before. Well, no, in the past, more so, like, they use it as, um, like, sensation, like, just trickle the ends of the strings along my back. Mm. I've never been fully flogged on my back, just that sensation. Or kind of like a light hit on the back. Yeah, the exactly. Okay. Just like a like a light. But this time, she actually, like, went hard on my back with the flogger, and it felt really fucking good. Felt like a massage almost i love being flogged on the back that's what i'm saying and then i asked her to like flog my lower back because it was kill. like my lower back was in so much pain from go-go dancing i always have lower back pains like especially like if i'm raving i get lower back pain so fucking easily anyways i had her flog my lower back and ended up loving it she was like usually people hate the lower back for for flogging and i was like nah keep doing it you do have to be careful you do have to be careful flogging the lower back because your organs are there. That's so true. So you can't be too rough or you can't go like she ham went, on it. She went ham on like my shoulder blades and up. Yeah. But like on the lower back, she just did like a nice like moderate tap. I like that. That felt yeah. really nice. Yeah. And I think on the on the lower back, you can do some. It's just like you can't like go too hard on it. Um, but uh, the upper back, yeah, is definitely fair game. And also one of my favorites. Again, get it like... Having my upper back flogged is like a treat. It really reminds me of um, there was one time my female dom was go-go dancing at there's this one club in LA. It's kind of like a goth kinky club. There's no sex. It's not sex oriented, but it's just like a fun place for like kinksters and you know, kind of more of that crowd to go be, you know, and and have a space for them. And then the upstairs, they they have an area where you can do some kinky stuff and um, like flogging and impact scenes. And um, I think they have some restraints. Anyways, so one time my female dom was go-go dancing at this club. It's called um, Bar Sinister. And my male dom and I went to the upstairs area and there was like some time in between so because other doms will go up there and flog or you know hit people whatever and there was some time in between so he's like hey do you want to do you want to do just a quick flogging scene and I was like sure why not so he 
there, there's like a silver bar with two cuffs. So he tied me, tied my hands onto the cuff. I held onto the silver bar and he started flogging my back and it felt so nice. And everyone was watching. It was like literally like a hundred people. It was like, it was just a really like sweet endearing scene. But I remember just like the, cause it was kind of cold up there almost, which was, it, they had like the AC blast or blasting anyways. And I just remember, or was it winter? Yeah, I think it was winter, so it was kind of cold up there. And I just remember, like, my skin was kind of cold, and then, like, the sensation of the flogger on my back, it felt so nice. So whenever Daddy and Lee was flogging our backs on that bed, like, it, for me, like, it just, it felt really good. It was nice. I loved it. And I told her that I liked having my feet flogged or paddled. Um, So we did a little bit of a warm-up with that. But then after the warm up, it was time for our main performance in the main room. On Back that- on that like hard oh. ottoman stage looking thing. Mm-hmm. So Nikki and I both get on all fours. A she has us. Well, we first we go back to like the the back room to like prepare, um, or just like have a quick moment, and then she gives us the toys that she wants us to carry out. Um, and then she takes our leashes and she walks us out and we're holding the toys and then we we get on the ottoman and we crawl on all fours and we put the toys in front of us um, and then it started. Yeah and so, I mean the scene wasn't too long it was only like I it was like 15 20 minutes. 20 minutes. She started a little bit with the flogger again yep. just to kind of um, a bit more I guess a, a warm up maybe. Yeah or just, just like, like to, start to get off. the show started. Yeah just to get the scene started. Because the cane is pretty intense. Yeah. So she started off with a flogger um, and she was flogging both of us. And then she moved on to the paddle. Um, and then came time for the cane. I'm not going to lie. Every single time she came at me with a cane, like I was just like, I had to like mentally prepare. And then like the moment I'd see her like walk to Nikki, I'd be like, thank God. <laughs> It's like early. But see, that's what I'm saying, though, right? Like the cane takes more like preparation, almost like mental preparation. I think I like the way that she would like hit me, like tut 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 tut, like on my butt, and like then a she, tap. Yeah, like tap 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 tap, and then she'd do a whack. Um, and I enjoyed that because I think she knew I couldn't just go right in for a whack. Like mm-hmm. I, but I for me it was more. It wasn't as thuddy as it was stingy. Yeah, it's definitely more stingy than it is thuddy. And for me, I don't do well with too stingy. I told her that. I was like, with the cane, you're probably gonna have to go moderate because I can't really go that hard. So the reason why I said it's like a thuddy sting, because I've, um, in the past, people have used like a whip on me, which is like a, a more like a flexible string and it's usually very thin and that feels super stingy. Or if they use a, a flogger that has, um, the braided edges or the the braided strings which i don't know if anyone's ever used those but they they're not my favorite see Um, braided strings i don't think i've used that before they weren't too bad what i don't like is floggers those floggers that were at that one sex party where it had like that shiny metallic overcoat that was hella stingy yeah but i I, way too stingy i've used some before where it was like a really thin braided flogger string and it was very stingy but it's not thuddy because it's not hard it's a flexible material so it's very very stingy Mm. but because the the cane had it's well i think she used a bamboo cane um you know it's usually like a it's rigid and it's not as flexible like it has more of like that thud kind of like Mm. foundation to it thuddy and thuddiness and then it's got the the stinginess um but also, if anyone, you know, wants to know what it was like for us to get, fl- or like, flogged and caned alongside each other, I didn't find it weird. I didn't think anything yeah. of it. I definitely, like, for me, it's not like I got into subspace. Yeah, it was more performative than it was, like, subspacey. Yeah, it, it was a performance. Um, there I was, was fun n- with it, though. Yeah, there was no way I could get into subspace during that. It takes a, it, it takes a different environment an environment for me to get into that so I didn't mind it at all because yeah a like we were just next to each other on all fours we've done that in cheerleading you know (laughs) doing a fucking pyramid um this time we were just on our underwear or we were wearing just thongs and the collars 
Um, and getting hit. And getting hit. And it was fine. I think we did great. What it um, felt like actually was, you know, when like your sibling is in trouble and your parents are like scolding them and you're just kind of sitting there and you're like, oh, that, that's kind of what it felt like. I like, didn't get that feeling at all. <laughs> whenever you were getting hit, it was just like I'm sitting there like waiting for my turn. <laughs> no, I know. At one point, like Nikki, I think, was getting caned and then I look over. <laughs> And, like, you had said something to me. The great thing was we had, like, our hair, you know, like, kind of, like, as a shield almost. Um, so I, you couldn't really, like, I couldn't see someone unless I, like, actually moved it out of the way or, like, turned my head. Yeah. So so how, how did the caning go for you? What was your, what were your thoughts on it? What was your experience? So my experience with the, th- the cane, I appreciate that she didn't go too hard. Mm-hmm. Um, it definitely did get very stingy at some point. And I honestly wish I could have like (sighs) taken a little bit more intensity, but I don't know. Like I was just nervous because like one thing I didn't want to do is like, you know, when you like, if you're on all fours and you're getting flogged or whipped or caned or whatever, and you get hit too hard and your like body immediately jerks up. I didn't want that to happen. I wanted to keep my cool and collection the whole time. Um, yeah. And our signal was a small butt wiggle if it was too much. Because it was kind of hard to hear in there. So yeah, you can like red you yeah. know, or like yellow. Um, so, so we did like a, it was kind of like a. A small wiggle was um, medium. And, or uh, like yellow. Or slow down. Anyways, so yeah, I, I would definitely try it again. That's what I was going to ask. Would you get caned again? Would you do it again? I would I would try it again. Yeah. And, and I think I would like to because I know we had like a limited time, you know, to do warm up. And then during the warm up, you know, other people came in and, you know, other people were getting flogged. So like it wasn't like a true, true warm up. Because I remember when we were walking to our performance, she was like, I wish I had a little time, a little more time to warm you up. And she was talking to me. Um, but anyways, I would say I greatly enjoyed the mental what do you, what do I want to call call it the mental toughness mm-hmm. of it yeah um like I said and, caning is more mental for me yeah. yes and then I definitely enjoyed I I did like at the end she took a paddle and started paddling my feet and that felt like a massage that's a treat oh that too. was nice yeah. that was a treat especially after being in heels it hurt, you know, so like having my feet bare and then just getting like a good paddle. Mm-hmm. Oh, loved it. I also, I wish she had flogged my feet because uh, I love having my feet flogged. I know I've talked about it before, but like um, I did. I like having my feet paddled. I did try. I did. After you had mentioned getting your feet flogged, I tried it once and I thought it was phenomenal. 10 and out so of 10. Then, so then when she, when she paddled my feet, I was like, oh, I wish she would flog them too. Yeah. But. And then afterwards, we had some time to just lay low. We went backstage. Um, I think I had a little bit more sushi. I was hungry. We were chilling with some of the other performers, just hanging out. Um, At one point, um, I told, I turned to Daddy and Lee and I was like, hey, do do you do shibari? She's like, yeah, of course. I brought my rope. So... She took me to one of the chairs in v- in one of the VIP sections and basically, oh man, okay. And this was like one of my favorite, I, I would say probably like the favorite part in my night is she, I sat down on the chair with my hands clasped together um, between my thighs and then she basically tied my my legs and my arms like in a cocoon and then basically tied this entire like intricate spider web that went through um that went through my ties in the cocoon and then like through the chair like all the way around it looked dope so I was basically like in a spider web of rope tied to this chair and when I say One of the things that I like, and I was explaining to her, one of the things that I really like about Shibari is the pressure that I feel from the rope really calms my nervous system. Um, So for me, like for example, for me, like my anxiety, whenever, 
you know, I'm feeling anxious or I'm having like a panic attack, the number one thing that will calm me down is direct like pressure on my chest, on my arms, like anywhere on my upper body. I love pressure. So basically like gray wind. See, and gray wind, he's one of my little emotional papas because um, usually if he senses, like anytime I'm having like anxiety or like a panic attack or anxiety attack, Grey Wind will come and sit on my chest and offer his, you know, what is that? 15, 18 pounds of chunk, um, as pressure for me. So anyways, I absolutely loved it. Love the pressure. Love the fact that I couldn't freaking move. Thankfully, like bladder wear. I don't know her. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised you didn't have to pee because you were in I there for like an hour. I, w- I was in there for, yeah, about an hour, maybe a little bit longer. I can't remember. I did w- at one point take a nap. Yeah, so, Kimi fell asleep in this in this bind. It, w- it was hilarious because as she was tying me up, like I could sense my mind like wanting to go into subspace. But like there were like, you know, someone would walk up and say something and then I'd like come out of it. Like I couldn't go st- go in and stay long. Um, just because people there were just so many different interactions and then at one point yeah I legit like fell asleep lost track of time um, took me a little nap and I and then I woke up and we chatted some more Um, I was so sad because we couldn't take a picture of the spider web but like from my point of view it looked amazing no everyone everyone would stop by and take a look and be like oh my god it was amazing she did really great work she did It, it looked really cool like a spider web and everything and um and the way that it was, like, really, like, tied onto, like, the whole chair, like, it wrapped around the chair. Um, it took her a long time to get you in Yeah, that it took yeah. a while. I don't even know. Because when our performance ended around, I think, like, 12.30, and then we... So it might have been over an hour, because you didn't, Actually, get, out, yeah, you didn't because get out of that until 3 in the morning. I was going to say, because I remember at one point, someone was, I was like, what time is it? And someone said it was 2.13. And then the next time that, or by the time that we got out, or that I got out of it, it was, I think, it was past 3 a.m. So, yeah, it was. Yeah. I was trying to remember. And you definitely weren't in it, like, over an hour, I want to say. Um, but well, it was really cool. I, and everyone loved it. It was it was great to see. Yeah. Yeah, because our performance ended around 1230. And then we were probably in the break room for, like, maybe 10 minutes and then after that we went and sat in the chair Mm -hmm. so she started like a little bit before one and then I didn't get out of it until close to three Mm -hmm. yeah it was gorgeous I loved it I think it um, actually made me think about like the time I had been tied before that and actually I I put these two together um during the time when I was being tied up so I like shibari as like decorative ties intricate ties like the spider web that I did it doesn't turn me on but it puts me into subspace mm-hmm. yeah. and it's more about like the connection between like my body the rigor and the rope mm-hmm. and it's not very sexual I remember one of the last times that I had been at a sex party and um this rigor slash dom like tied me up and it was more sexual like I liked it but I didn't like it nearly as much as I liked like this interaction I would agree it's the same for me the times that I've done shibari it was it was more well I take that back it's probably been half and half half the time that we did shibari like with my doms it would be sexual the other half it was more just like to explore the rope and and do something fun and and do suspensions and stuff and so and in those instances like I wasn't turned on but I felt very like connected to like my ropes the doms um or (laughs) the rope my doms and so like I really like that experience I don't normally associate shibari with arousal if that makes sense yep so it is it is if I am I guess kind of doing something sexual while I'm tied up in shibari like it takes me a little bit longer to get there It was funny because after the party, I had had a friend ask me, they were like, so do you get turned on by having other people watch you get hit? And I was like, no, no, not at all. 
I get turned on. Like, for example, if like if I'm getting flogged and then, you know, but it's like a one on one session. If I'm getting flogged and then like you touch my pussy with the flog, like I actually really like that. Um, But like if I'm if it's in front of people, I more so like to be flogged, spanked, etc. I don't know how to explain this. For the factor, A, I like the pain. And I like to see people see how much I can take. I like that too. That's but why I, I that's don't why, get aroused by it. That's why I like, per, that's why I really enjoy that experience, like performative impact play. Because like, I don't know, for some reason, like uh, maybe it's my ego, maybe it's a sub in me, maybe it's a dom in me, whatever it is. I like to show others just how much I can take. Yep. I don't know if that's I don't know like. how to explain. Yeah, yeah I, I, I feel like either. a weird thing to explain, but it's like... I would agree. Because, like, getting hit during, for a performance versus getting hit, like, um, during, like, a sexual subspace scene, like, two very Very different different things. things. I would agree with that because, and and actually, I was reflecting on it, too, um, because one of my partners had asked, they were like, so are you turned on while you're getting hit? And I think it depends on the scenario. Yes, I love being flogged and I like it for the pleasure. Like it brings me pleasure, but it doesn't always arouse me. It, I think the arousal is going to depend on the person that I'm doing it with and um, the environment. Mm-hmm. For example, I've been flogged at other sex parties before where I liked the pleasure of it. I liked the sensation of it, but I wasn't aroused. And then there have been times where like with my doms, for example, we did like a flogging session and I felt aroused. But I think that was in part because, like, they turned me on. So I think, like, in the instances where it was, like, my doms and I doing flogging, it was because, like, I am attracted to them and I, you know, had feelings to them and I like them and, like, that's why I was aroused. So if I'm, at, if I'm at a party, for example, and, like, just someone starts flogging me randomly, which, like I said, I've done that plenty of times, and, like, it was, it was never about arousal. It was always about just, like, the pleasure, which I think you can separate, like, pleasure and arousal. Mm-hmm. For example, like, you know, when you eat, you get pleasure, but like, I'm not turned on by eating pizza. <laughs> sometimes you can be, but sometimes, oh, you That's know, a great point. Yeah. Exactly. And so, and I, I think with a lot of, with a lot of BDSM or a lot of kink for me, it's definitely something that I was kind of reflecting on afterwards and like differentiating for myself is like the things in kink and BDSM that like bring me pleasure and then the things that bring me like arousal. And it was kind of funny to me when I was thinking about it because I was like, what brings me arousal? Knife play. (laughs) Um, What brings me arousal? Knife play brings me arousal. Um, Getting hit across the face during sex brings me arousal. Yep. I was going to say, for me, I would say what brings me arousal is power exchange, getting hit across the face. And definitely power exchanges because if I especially with someone that I really like connect with yes and someone that I really um can submit to or like really do, uh like dominate like that brings me arousal but if it's like topping or bottoming in a way that's just like for like fun or for you know just kind of the experience like if I'm blog- flogging someone or they're flogging me like that's not necessarily arousal to me and that's not a power exchange yeah what else yeah that was a nice thing to reflect on I will say yeah I was just kind of laughing when I was like what does bring me pleasure and I'm like "Mm, knife play (laughs) that turns me on but yeah because one of my partners had asked he was like so does are you turned on when you're getting hit and And honestly I probably couldn't have done it if I we had been like on the platform getting flogged and I had been turned on it would have been way too weird for me to I agree I I don't think I would have like enjoyed that so like if it's something that's like performative or just for like kind of like the pleasure like in relation to just like the the feeling of it like getting pleasure from the feeling of it like that I don't mind doing alongside you Mm -hmm. so like if they asked us to come back and like do more like and this is something, like, I, I would want to do more, like, performative, kinky things. Like, the go-go dancing and the fans. I don't mind it. It's just not my strong suit. It really isn't. But I hope they liked us as performers no, in I the think- sense of go-go dancing. But I do think, you know, our strong suit does lie in kink and like, BDSM. Kink, BDSM, impact. Yeah. Not, like, I'll, I'll sit there and rope bunny. 
um and you can i can rope bunny any day i mean honestly i rope bunnied for you know two hours and loved it yeah and like i said everybody thought it was cool i can do things for like the performative aspect of it and just for like for fun and for like the pleasure of it but like i yeah i think if it's like arousal it would like if they were like hey would you do a knife scene not alongside you no no i would not that's yeah that's, that'd be like that's a your hard thing no. that's too intimate so i definitely think that's something that like you know if you are kinky and if you are um you know into some aspects of bdsm like think about it something maybe yeah, to reflect, reflect on, on. That. yeah what brings, what brings you pleasure you, and what, what brings you arousal because mm-hmm. i think i think there is kind of a distinction there so overall i had fun it was a good time i uh, loved it it was tiring I would do it again, but I would definitely, like, emphasize, like, my strong suits would be in more of, like, the kinky BDSM type stuff. Like, that, doing those kind of scenes, like, those kind of performances for people rather than casually dancing on top of a table that has a crack that's really scary. Yeah. Agreed. Well, anyways, guys, um, our apartment is um, having all sorts of alarms and shit go off, and I have a meeting in a few minutes. But thank you for tuning in. I hoped you liked our recollection of our performance for the sex party that we had this past weekend. Um, Of course, I will be posting some of my more racier photos from, you know, like of the costumes on Patreon for the fantasy tier. Um, That is the only place we'll be able to see it. And it's really not that many photos. Again, I wish I had taken more, but unfortunately I didn't get the chance to. Um, but and I did love the hats. I like yeah, I really the hats did were love dope. the hats. They yeah. were like I felt so fun and sexy in them. I just once we got on that table, I'm like I cannot fall. Yeah, it was terrifying. <laughs> I cannot um, fall. So, anyways, thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you have a great rest of your week. Don't forget wear condoms. Our live show, Our live October show 20th. is next week. Oh my God, we're so excited. It's a week away. And everything's coming together. So get your tickets. We have a few left. I think it'll be really fun for everyone. I think it'll be just a really kind of... Um, it's going to be a fun night. Like fun, exciting. But I think... <laughs> Snow! Snow! But I think also intimate night, if that makes sense. Like, it's not a... We only have, what, like 100, 120 tickets. So it's not like a huge crowd. It's like a small wedding, you know? And so so I do think there, there will be kind of like that intimate aspect. Like, this isn't like a stadium full of people. Yeah. Um, we're not there yet. Uh, but we will get there. Um, but, like, I, I think it'll be just like fun, intimate. And I've got some really fun stories to tell. We are recording it. And the episode will release a couple weeks after the live show so if you can't make it if you're not in los angeles you will have an opportunity to hear it um but if you can be there in person highly recommend because i think that will be the plus the gift bags you're getting some cool shit oh yeah we've got lube in the gift bags from good clean love don't forget use code double 20 um, gift cards to balesa um well we yeah we've got we but we can't just tell them everything anyways the gift bags are gonna be dope we love you guys Again, wear condoms. See you next week.